Hello, myself Dr. Kalpana Sangwan. Today we are going to learn about choroidal granulomas. I know it's a diagnostic dilemma whether to put it as tuberculosis or sarcoidosis. I myself have learned it, faced it in my own retina practice. So let's learn about few points which would help us to clinch the diagnosis. Choroidal granulomas are nothing but inflammation of the choroidal stroma which is granulomatous in origin. So the lesion usually consists of lymphocytes, plasma cells and necrosis. It can be caseating in cases of tuberculosis and non-caseating like in sarcoidosis. Clinically, choroidal granulomas appear as a subretinal lesion which is yellow in color, could be dull, intense. Even in sheep, it can be oval or lobulated depending upon which pathology lies behind. Sometimes there could be a lot of SRF and even exudated retinal attachment in case the lesion is large. Once we have figured out what a choroidal granuloma is, let's differentiate whether it's a tuberculous or a sarcoid one. If you are thinking in terms of a tuberculosis one, then first and foremost, look for other ocular signs which could be suggestive of tuberculosis. Secondly, look for other infectious and non-infectious causes and rule out them which can cause a choroidal granuloma. Thirdly, do a chest x-ray, tuberculin test, culture, PCR, interferon gamma release assay which could be corroborative to the diagnosis of tuberculosis. If you are thinking it as a sarcoid lesion, then look for other ocular signs which could be corroborative of sarcoidosis. Secondly, radiological tests like HRCT and in cases of doubt, get a pulmonologist review because sometimes it could be quite tricky to separate it from tuberculosis. Thirdly, get systemic investigations done like serum ACE levels. Secondly, even these cases have lymphopenia also. Thirdly, these days, soluble interleukin-2 receptor assays have been very confirmatory of sarcoidosis. Once we are done investigating the patient, let's look at the lesion because it itself can give us a clue whether it's a tuberculosis or sarcoidosis. So let's look at the tuberculosis lesion first. It is usually well demarcated, intense yellow in color, solitary and lobulated in shape. Why so? Because there is high local antigen load which will bring about intense inflammation and which will give it as an intense yellow color and large size. Thirdly, it is usually perivascular in origin and sometimes there is a lot of SRF, so exudative retinal attachment also and overlying retinal hemorrhages can be seen in a tuberculous choroidal granuloma. Like I said, there are full thickness lesions because of intense localized inflammation which is basically occupying the entire thickness of choroid. So what are vascularized choroidal granulomas? These are usually tuberculous in origin. They have surrounding retinal vessels with overlying retinal hemorrhages and abundant SRF surrounding it. So even on fluorescent angiographies, they have been shown as intense leak very early in the angiogram. Coming to a sarcoid lesion, these are usually ill-defined, dull yellow in color and oval in shape and usually multiple in number. Why so? Because there is diffuse choroidal inflammation unlike tuberculosis where there is localized inflammation. So usually these lesions occupy partial thickness of the choroid. In sarcoidosis, there is associated optic nerve head inflammation and intense vascular sheathing. Vasculitis is one of the most prominent features which we would acknowledge in cases of sarcoidosis. So as we discussed, vasculitis is a very prominent feature in sarcoidosis, which is very much generalized. But while in cases of tuberculosis, it is occlusive in nature, very much localized. So that's how you can differentiate it. Just do an FFA and you'll find a lot of CNP areas in tuberculosis lesion. Sometimes these choroidal granulomas can be vaguely categorized, which usually has no prognostic value, but still they can be categorized as macular, perivascular, optic nerve head granuloma or diffuse granulomas. What all investigations are important as an ophthalmologist point of view? Fundus picture, enhanced depth imaging OCT, fundus fluorescent angiography and endocyanin green angiography. OCT is one of the most important investigation to be done in such lesions. 
first of all it will tell you about the appearance of the lesion it will also help you to determine the extent of the lesion and at the same time it will help you to monitor the lesion you can utilize the OCT to detect the lesion so first and foremost the lesion has to be there it should not be like that you are imagining it secondly to learn about the appearance of the lesion it is usually deeply embedded in the choroidal stroma hyperreflective in nature with internal homogeneity and along with that there is choriocapillaris compression you can also check the extent of the lesion whether it's occupying the partial thickness of the choroidal stroma or full thickness of it you can also serially follow up the lesion as these choroidal granulomas initially decrease anteroposteriorly and then the lateral extent begins to shrink FA, most of the lesion will have early hyperfluorescence a late hyperfluorescence until unless there is vascularized choroidal granuloma which because of its vascularity will have intense leakage in the early phases itself so is the cases in sarcoid granulomas with optic nerve head inflammation and associated retinal vasculitis they will leak immensely in earlier phases itself at the same time on ICG all the lesions will be hyposinescent throughout the phases except there can be some rap lesions detected in tuberculosis. The classical picture of a vascularized choroidal granuloma. You can see it's perivascular in origin, at the same time intense yellow in color, with overlying retinal hemorrhages and surrounding exudative retinal detachment. These are the pictures from one of the recent patient of mine who was diagnosed with sarcoidosis. You can see multiple dull yellow, ill-defined lesions, which are mostly confined to the posterior pole. It was started on treatment and you can see the resolution of these lesions in subsequent visits. These are the OCT scans of the lesions of the last patient which have been shown in the form of the video. In the first two pictures, the first and the second visit have been compared while in the last, first and the last visit have been compared. So you can see there is a lot of outer retinal layers hyperreflectivity along with SRF and there is elevation of the RP in the first picture. Well, as you see the last, which is the extreme low on the right side, you can see there is a total resolution of the lesion along with the SRF. There is not at all any hyperreflectivity we can find out. At the same time, RP elevation has been resolved. We have diagnosed the pathologies of tuberculous origin. So then you can take a help of a physician or if you are confident of doing it on your own, then you can start ATT. And before doing that, get a complete blood count, liver function test, kidney function test done. Start the patient on ADT and if the lesion is fovea threatening, macular in origin, please add steroid 1 mg per kg body weight and taper it off in next 4 weeks. And second case, if the pathology is of sarcoid in origin, please start steroids 1 mg per kg body weight and taper it off in next 6 weeks. In case the patient is having side effects of steroids, or instead of starting steroids, the pathology is not decreasing, then you can add immunosuppressive as well. Secondly, what is the role of NTVHF in such cases? Like I told you, if on ICG, if you find out that there are few RAP lesions or the lesion is very much vascularized, so it's mostly of tuberculous origin. So what does why does it happen first of all? Because of intense choroidal ischemia, there is a high level of VEGF. So you can add anti-VEGF to such patients in case there is no resolution despite adding ATT and steroids. I hope you have learned a little bit about choroidal granulomas and you would find this video useful in refining your diagnosis. In case you have any queries or any questions, you can mail me. You can find my email in the description box below. Thank you.